hello everybody and um, today's video will be about some uh, exercises uh, uh, with javascript uh, so we'll try to do some practical work uh, uh, using the concepts uh, that we are seeing on the first part uh, of the javascript introduction basically uh, arrays uh, and um, strings uh, and uh, the management of variables and values okay so i'll uh, propose to do some exercises together that okay, okay we'll try to clarify some of the programming issues uh, of the part of the language that we studied up to now and at the same time uh, we try to um, have a look at the tools that we may use during programming so it's not useful to explain uh, an editor and compiler or whatever in theory it's be much better to see it in practice okay so um, first of all uh, what is the um, runtime environment uh, that you can use uh, uh, in uh, developing javascript so first of all uh, the the main uh, uh, interpreter for now for our javascript programs will not be the browser uh, we'll come to the browser in, in a couple of weeks uh, but first uh, we want to work in a simpler environment so what i did here i just opened a terminal onto a unix server where uh, there was uh, an installation on of node of node.js node version okay you see that we have uh, the installation of, of, a, of a pretty recent version of, of the node uh, long-term um, support version um, and uh, right now i'm running on windows on the with the windows assistant for linux wsl uh, this is one way you could run this uh, directly on linux so you can have a virtual machine uh, you could also run node uh, on the windows environment itself it doesn't make uh, uh, much difference uh, uh, nowadays so you find uh, <coughs> in the in the slides uh, of the um, of the javascript introduction the links uh, to the pro to the installation procedures so our um, <coughs> main environment will be uh, of course uh, working on, on linux uh, whether a, a booty on linux or a virtual machine with linux or um, um, uh, the, the virtual machine inside the windows subsystem for linux that work uh, equally well okay uh, and so the first uh, um, thing that we can do uh, is uh, to work interactively uh, so if you run uh, node interactively uh, it will open us uh, a, um, a prompt where we can uh, write uh, uh, javascript commands and have them executed immediately okay uh, so it's a it's a um, special way the interpreter is working so it's not normally last time we saw that uh, the interpreter usually reads the entire file okay and then uh, after reading the entire file it will uh, um, execute it uh, right now in the interactive mode uh, node.js will uh, uh, simply um, sorry let me switch yes the, um, the interpreter will uh, um, uh, execute one line at a time so for example if i write an, any kind of expression uh, the uh, javascript uh, node js interpreter will e evaluate this expression and print it out for me so i don't need to insert a console.log statement uh, to have this uh, instruction printed hmm? uh, or um, i can declare variables uh, uh, let a equal to three and uh, undefined is the value of the let statement of course let uh, does not return any value so the let statement itself is will return no value so undefined is the type but if i uh, look uh, at the current value of a i see uh, number three and so on so it's a very uh, common way uh, of uh, testing some statement uh, uh, for for checking uh, um what uh, what what every statement does uh, in interactive mode okay so you you know that this is called uh, uh REPL, ripple or uh um it's a read evaluate and print evaluate evaluate and print loop so the interpreter enters into this uh, uh, oh, sorry for the syntax error uh, into this loop uh, where every for every line it will read the line evaluate uh, the uh, line and print the results hmm? 
so when we we'll call about the repo uh, of, of node.js we will talk about this interactive version of course uh, if i exit uh, control d end of file uh, i could also prepare a javascript file and execute it directly so uh, let me prepare any uh, sorry let's move to a more suitable directory source web applications uh, javascript examples exercises okay so let's create uh, one simple example first.js and uh, use the editor that you want and uh, uh, remember that we always start the files with use strict uh, semicolon and then we may let a equal to three as we did before uh, let b equal to a plus two for example and console dot log b or whatever okay so uh, we are we created a, a simple file with javascript code and when we save it uh, we can just execute it with node and the file name and uh, in this case it will uh, read the whole file uh, execute uh, the contents and the console log statements will uh, if present will print the results there onto, onto the standard output of the process okay so interactive one line at a time or we create a file and let node execute uh, the whole file for us um, this is if we want to work uh, directly on the command line uh, another tool that uh, uh, we can use uh, is the um, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, Visual Studio Code hmm, that uh, many of you are already familiar with. Uh, we have the Windows version, the Mac version, the Linux version, whatever, and uh, uh, we can use it uh, to uh, execute and create uh, uh, files. Uh, I previously opened uh, the, um, this uh, uh, Visual Studio Code on the same directory where I was with the console, so the, the fi third.js file that we uh, just uh, uh, created will show here in the um, in the list of files in the current folder by the way if you are using uh, um, uh, uh, linux on a virtual machine or wsl which is a kind of a virtual machine you can have a visual uh, studio code to connect remotely to the virtual machine so that you can work on the uh, host computer and uh, uh, have vs code just to remote every command you do on the virtual machine but there's nothing uh very complex uh, to do with just a configuration or where um, the the editor will actually work okay uh, so in this case uh, uh what can we do if we are inside uh, uh, vs code hmm? inside vs code we can uh, open a terminal and inside the terminal will be the same uh, semi terminal emulator like we had the, the other terminal there and so we can uh, launch a node interactive interpreter is the same we are in the same environment hmm? so uh, of course uh, a is not defined here because every uh, uh, interpreter every time we, la we launch node we are creating a new environment so it does not remember anything uh, but we could have open um, a, a repl here a repl here or we can run the code hmm? running the code uh, we have a run uh, me um, menu with the uh, uh, run without debugging or run with debugging activated if we run without debugging the program will be simply run and the output you see that command has been given is uh, node further js exactly as before and the five is the output exactly as before hmm? if we want to debug the program uh, we could set uh, a breakpoint for example here and uh, uh, start debugging f5 and so we'll run until the breakpoint is hit and uh, we have all this uh, uh, additional information about what the program is doing to inspect the variable for example a and b uh, at this moment are still uh, undefined um, and uh, are, well, are other information that we are not uh, uh, interested in now and we can execute the program or do uh, execute it one step at a time like with any debugger so we execute one step and we see that uh, uh, the the execution point is here and a becomes three right now uh, later on b becomes five and we can execute the last statement uh, 
that will print uh, five on the output console so actually we have all the tools for uh, writing using and debugging uh, simple javascript files hmm? inside uh, uh, vs code which is a very familiar way and uh, as i said it's very transparent so we you see actually really what are the comments that are given and uh, uh, where are the files uh, uh, that they're working with hmm? so initially we uh, will uh, uh, mostly work uh, on this environment okay but let's start doing something maybe more interesting or more practical uh, so let's start with this uh, first uh, exercise um, so the, the text is here we want to develop uh, um, I call it improve my scores uh, like the university scores uh, we want to develop a small uh, JavaScript program uh, to manage the scores of your exams that you got uh, in your bachelor degree for example okay so uh, what he, we, we, we don't have any input capability yes with uh, now uh, we don't want to we don't care about learning how to read from the keyboard because in uh, in a web application there is no keyboard with the user so uh, we, we will uh, for input uh, for reading the data the input data we for the moment will just define a static uh, uh, a constant uh, inside uh, inside the code okay uh, later on of course we will connect with databases and with backends uh, uh, to get real data but for the moment we don't care okay uh, so we define an array with all uh, your scores uh, in chronological order from the first for the last one and uh, uh, for the moment we we uh, we store just the scores okay so we don't care about the name of the course the number of credits the dates or whatever uh, 30 um, with honors then trent alode is something which is a bit complex to handle for for the moment we won't handle it so maybe you can uh, add this uh, the handling of the turtle uh, of the laude uh, later on during uh, maybe your development and what you want to do uh, with this array of numbers uh, basically it's an array of numbers with other scores uh, uh, eliminate the two lowest ranking scores so the two exams that you hated the most uh, will be deleted and uh, in, instead of these two lower ranking score you add two new scores at the end of the array uh, whose value is equal to the average of the existing score so if my general average is i don't know 27 and uh, removing the two uh, worst scores the average will become the average will become 28 without these two bad uh, exams then i will add at the end of the of the array 28 and 28 because this is the new average and so i want to have the same number of exams as before but with a better average okay and the better average is the one that we get uh, by deleting the two worst uh, costs it's just an exercise uh, to give uh, some some meaning of the on the number that we are working with okay and so at the end we want to print both arrays so that we can, can compare the scores before and after the improvement and showing the average in both cases okay so this is just a simple example exercise let's try to to write uh, um, um, a javascript program for solving that so i will use the um, vs code uh, i call it the scores scores.js i create a new file scores.js uh, remember the first statement will always be used strict in our universe hmm? and uh, uh, we can uh, define uh, the, the the array no? that we want to use for uh, for storing uh, these scores hmm? uh, oh, sorry i just activated the wrong i there are so i'm sorry for the confusion because the, the same keyboard shortcuts that i used to change the video stream are used also are uh, used also by vs code so uh, there's a bit of conflict okay um first step uh, we need to uh, define the array with the scores so const scores equal array and inside this array we'll put uh, the, uh, the the scores numbers okay i declared uh, a variable with const uh, usually uh, your first choice declaration should be const so by default you always think of declaring variable with a const keyword and only if the variable is expected to change across the execution of the program uh, you can uh, or you can think of, of declaring the variable with, with let okay uh, let is very convincing because it's only three letters long a constant is longer but actually uh, if we want to program in a protective way uh, constant is better and uh, we can use let just to 
uh, make it explicit that we want to run the uh, they want to change the value later on okay um, and uh, uh, for example we have some scores that we put uh, I, I let, let me insert some values uh, I don't know 28 uh, 18 uh, which is not very good uh, 25 27 24 another 24 and uh, maybe a 20 and uh, and that 30 or we were missing the 30 and the 28 so that we can finish with good scores at the end okay so this exam just some numbers that I put there okay and then I need to uh, remove uh, and uh, and work with these uh, uh, numbers here so for example let just first uh, suggestion never write more than one two three lines of god of code uh, without running them so let's first uh, check that everything is okay console.log uh, of scores uh, if we run this program we should it should print uh, as uh, the array uh, formatted in a more or less nice way uh, because this is the the, the, the native formatting uh, of the console uh, the translation into a, a, a visual representation of the array okay so this is actually printing the the kind of numbers that that, that we declared uh, one note is uh, okay but i declare this as a constant but we are going to change it okay so for example what happens if i try to change scores the first score for example to 26 should it work or not because it's const so can i cannot change it well it turns out that it works fairly well it has no problems in changing the first score to 26 as we see and it doesn't uh, uh, raise any kind of error error why is that well because when we declare a const uh, variable we are saying that the reference is constant will not change we are not saying anything about the value of the object that has been references referenced it by that uh, variable so uh, if i i try to do to reassign scores to another array that would be an error because the scores reference is initialized with born with this reference and cannot change if i try to run this it will tell me that uh, uh, i'm trying to make an assignment to a constant variable uh, forget about the, uh, the expression constant variable which is a bit silly but uh, it's the, the error method that node.js throws a, a task so we're trying to assign something to a variable that has be uh, been declared uh, uh, as constant so we cannot redo the assignment we can um, change the value inside so always keep in mind this when you you should have a mental model where we have the references here and we have the values there and so uh, the references point to values we can use the reference to change update the values uh, but you cannot uh, in the case of a const you cannot change the reference to point to something else hmm? Um, so it's the pointer that becomes constant uh, it, uh, cannot uh, uh, updated but the content of the object cannot be uh, closed okay, cannot be you cannot ensure they will not change hmm? uh, okay you can see if you want you can paste this code into the python tutor that we saw last time uh, so that you can have a better feeling of, of where the objects are and how they change hmm, during the uh, during the execution okay so we have this array of, of, of scores and uh, we want to uh, eliminate the two lowest ranking scores uh, eliminate the two lowest ranking scores. so first of all i need to find which is the lowest ranking score and then uh, delete it from the array hmm? let's try to do that without resourcing resorting to a lots of lots of, uh, of nested for loops okay let's try to uh, manage the javascript objects in a higher level way uh, by using the methods of the object whenever possible um, so is there a way to compute uh, the minimum value the minimum score well of course there is we can do just do a let uh, 
a, a minimum score we initialize it to a given value of course it's a minimum so we must initialize it to the highest value uh, with, a, with a value which is uh, uh, higher than the normal uh, contents of the, of the of the array and then uh, we uh, we can iterate over the array and find this the old way like we were programming C for example so we could uh, have a for loop uh, uh const i is const i is uh, at zero until i is less than uh, scores dot length uh, of course uh, uh visual studio code is quite clever and so will uh, tell us uh, with auto completion uh, most of the methods and the names that we need uh, i plus plus and uh, if uh, uh, scores position i is less than minimum score then uh, minimum score it will be updated uh, to scores of i scores uh, position i okay and so this should uh, be able to print uh, the minimum score That we just computed let's try it i will print uh, uh, sorry it's not const it's a let because i needs to change hmm? okay it will print 18 of course we are we were quite familiar with that hmm? um, this is the old way okay the c way the low level way of uh, uh, of finding the minimum or uh, winning an array uh, and it's possible to do that uh, let's try to to do something better um, first of all uh, we can we know that the for statement uh, has a, a different format for a race and uh, uh, well so uh, let me make a comment first uh, usually the index of the of the of the loop uh, is declared uh, immediately inside the loop so we not reuse a, a variable that has been declared uh, before but we we create a, a variable specifically for the body of this loop here mm -hmm. and the scope of this variable will start here and we end at the end of the loop so we don't have any any um, overlap in scopes and we don't have any confusion between different indexes of values when we don't want to iterate uh, over an array there is a, a um, an easier way an easier syntax so let me comment this line and use the, the syntax which is the for of hmm? for let uh, uh, score of scores so what does it mean uh, we have an array scores and we want to iterate over the values of this array and so the of uh, loop will pick every value of the array once at a time and assign them to uh, this uh, variable here okay and so uh, i don't need to access i don't have the i variable anymore i don't need to access the the, the array in any way and I already have the score of every element so score is uh, iterating over the different positions of the array and so we don't have to index uh, score hmm? uh, index it in, in this way so we can run it and of course the results should be the same no i forgot something uh, okay there is a, a brace okay 18 again hmm. so i'm i'm really pedantic with this uh, write a few lines and then try to execute them because it's the only way of catching errors early on hmm. um, so this is a, is a um, more compact way we don't uh, and uh, it has the same semantics but we don't need to have the i uh, available and uh, all the times uh, by the way in this expression uh, we could also declare and this can be a strength thing so, uh, this um, 
iteration variable, the score variable, as a constant. And how can it be constant? Well, because for every iteration, we are creating a new variable, a new reference uh, that points to the specific element. So inside the iteration, the score variable is a constant, will not change. Uh, when we close the iteration, we re repeat the loop, uh, then a new score variable will be created by pointing at a different uh, uh, element. Huh? So that's uh, uh, why we can declare it const. If we wanted to have it persistent, so this variable should, in a way, should be remembered elsewhere, we should use var that will not uh, be um, constrained by the scope of this loop. Okay, so this is a very um, small improvement uh, over uh, what we had before. But uh, I remember last time that we discussed about uh, uh, the math uh, uh, object in JavaScript. And so in math, we have a lot of uh, uh, functions. And maybe we also have the function for computing the minimum. For example, for example, uh, here, minimum, math.min. So we already have a function that will call, uh, will uh, return the minimum, the lowest valued number uh, from a list of numbers. So what we could do, we could be more clever and just write uh, let uh, minimum score equal to math.min of the array scores, right? So we can forget about all of this code and just rely on the minimum function, which is already available in the library. We can run it and it doesn't work. It does not work because the result printed here is not a number, it's not 18. So what's wrong here? Uh, uh, the wrong uh, is, uh, let, let, let's try to try it into the terminal. If I say math.minimum of uh, 3 and, f and 5 and 2, it will return 2. So it works. But it doesn't work if I pass an array to it. So minimum, if I pass the array containing 3 and 5, and two, it returns not a number. Why? Well, it says that. Uh, it returns the lowest value number passed into it. So you can only pass values, numbers. Zero, uh, the, the arguments of the minimum functions are zero or more numbers. So uh, you should pass all the elements of the array. So if you have the, an array my array is a 3, 5, 2. Uh, I cannot, of course, as I, I already checked, uh, uh, compute the minimum of, the, of, a, of an array. Doesn't work. I could compute the minimum over the elements of the array. So I could pass the first A1, A0, A1, and A2. In this case, it's working. The problem is that we cannot use this approach in our code because how many values do we have? We don't know in general. And this is where the strange operator that we saw last time, the spread operator, comes into place. If we take an array and spread it, sorry, we should use it in a, in a yeah, in a, in a complex. Okay. Uh, if we use the spread operator, it converts the three dots, an array, into a list of numbers. So the spread operator takes an array and converts that into the numbers themselves. And, uh, the, uh, it's actually spreading the values of the array in different positions. And so this tells us that we can just take the scores spread them and so we are creating many arguments of the minimum function one for every element of the array and let the minimum function just compute the minimum across all the values so this is actually a one-liner one line one line of code that will compute actually uh, now what's wrong here 
uh, sorry I, I made some mistake up there okay okay right now it's actually printing the 18 so we found without uh, old style for loop uh, and trying to exploit the uh, the, um, the the libraries uh, the library functions the minimum uh, value of the array and then we just need to remove it hmm? so find the minimum remove it removing an element uh, we can use for example the splice function so scores dot splice uh, remember the splice elements uh, uh, method removes the elements from an array and if necessary insert new elements in this position so uh, what are the parameters uh, the parameters are start the, the location from which to start removing the element and delete counted number of elements to delete so in this case we uh, have the position and uh, one position so we can we should remove one element from a given position what is this position well is the position of the 18 so we first f first find where this position is located so uh, let position and how we can find this element again we can use the scores dot index of the index of function that we um, saw last time returns the index of the first occurrence of a value in an array so again uh, it will uh, uh, find the element we know the element is there because it was just computed by the minimum function and it will return me uh, the index of this array index of minimum score so at this point we find what the value of the minimum find its position and then splice splice the array by removing that position let's write uh, run so you see that we have one less element in the array and the 18 is missing here okay so if we want to remove uh, uh, two elements we just uh, can repeat these two statements uh, repeat uh, all the score twice hmm? okay I'm, I'm lazy so I'm doing a cut and paste you could also do a loop uh, of course uh, we cannot redefine the values let is not allowed uh, to be uh, you cannot create uh, more than once a given variable so in this case you see that we have removed uh, both the 18 and the 20 from our code from our scores okay but are we doing something bad because at the end of the exercise it's asking us to compare the scores before and after the improvement oh we modified the initial score so we don't have them anymore so it's better not to work on the original array but to work on a copy of that array hmm? so uh, initially we should uh, uh, create or copy the new sc the scores into a new uh, uh, another array with the new scores or better scores by making working on the copy of this so that at the end we can compare the initial scores with the better scores right and again let's not do a mistake we we try to copy the initial scores to the better scores with an assignment it will just copy the reference and so we will still be modifying the initial one uh, the, uh, the the way we want to create a copy hmm, is with the method array dot of we see the documentation says returns a new array from a set of elements from a, uh, uh, um, uh, an, another type of array so or another iter role object so make a new array from the existing scores 
or another alternative would be maybe I, I like it better create a new array by spreading the existing one hmm? it's a, it's an alternative way of, of saying the same uh, um, instruction okay so at this point we just have to uh, correct our code by using not scores but better scores everywhere because we want to work on the new array of course we are going to learn to do that with functions uh, very very soon and so we don't waste time doing cut and paste and, uh, and correcting many places okay so at this point uh, we should be able to compare the initial scores and the new ones uh, why is that empty All right, I hope that scores I should uh, let me check with the debug so it's an, it's an expected so let's see what happens maybe it's a stupid error maybe not so we can see that scores is an array with these 10 elements okay if I execute this uh, array of uh, I have the better scores. Why is that? Ah, it's not a way off, sorry, from. Okay, sorry. Let's restart from the beginning. Okay. Uh, there are two different uh, uh, syntaxes I write from that copies an, an array from another one and the array of uh, that creates uh, from a from a set uh, of values mm -hmm. uh, in this case uh, the uh, right syntax is from mm -hmm. so that was my mistake and right now we see that actually we have the two different uh, arrays uh, one is the original one and the other is the modified one um, that's one of the reasons also that why I prefer this kind of syntax mm, because it's uh, it doesn't require me to remember the difference between from and of okay so uh, with our exercise where are we we are at the point uh, where we eliminated the two lowest ranking scores and we also have a copy of the oldest ones and the only final part is to add new scores at the end equal to the rounded average of the existing score so we compute the average of the existing scores and uh, well this time uh, there is no overage of the scores there is no shortcuts we must do that with the loop because there is no math.average function available to us no, this is not defined in the library so we do that with a with a loop in the old way so let average is equal to zero uh, for uh, uh, const uh, uh, score let me just write s of scores or better scores we should not compute the average of, of the bet uh, scores also and uh, we just uh, add to the average the uh, s the value of the score and at the end we divide by the number of average divided by uh, the length of the better scores hmm. okay uh, so we can at this point add the scores uh, sorry the average the list of scores so we just add at the end to an array we remember that we have the push method for doing that so better scores the push average and the average we can push more than one element at a time so instead of uh, writing push and push we can push more than once run and we get a strange printout uh, the second array is strange because the oh we forgot to round the numbers 
okay we do the division but we got a fractional number so in some sense we are entering a fractional number instead of an integer one we must uh, um, we must correct it and uh, of course we have a mat dot uh, round yes mat dot round method uh, will be rounded to the nearest integer okay or we could also have uh, the floor method that will round to the uh, smallest integer so by rounding the error by rounding the, the error uh, sorry i put it in the wrong, wrong place my average equal to mat dot round the average of average g okay and we have it hmm, at the moment now we have the comparison between the two types of array before and after the improvements of the score hmm. so the new average is 26 uh, of the new array the old one was uh, a bit lower hmm? so we just a very simple exercise uh, get we just use to get some a bit more familiar with the array methods okay that's for the first exercise we have a second one hmm, to to play with today uh, with this word uh, with the more with the strings so let's move to the second exercise uh where we want to develop a small program to manage uh, the list of your courses no? in a way we are creating the pieces uh, by uh, ingredient by ingredient to create sort of a, of a um, university uh, um, libretto with all the scores uh, uh, that you have uh, uh, and and then we'll be maybe uh, we'll trans transform that into a web application uh, uh, piece at a time so right now we are just doing some very basic exercises but uh, we are already doing them in the in the context of the university's course uh, at least okay so in this case what do you, what do we want to do uh, develop a small program where we can define the name of your courses as a comma separated list uh, let's imagine we have uh, this list of courses in the first or second year uh, as a list and we can create an array uh of course uh, we have a string uh, with a comma separated uh, set of names uh, we hope that no names of the polytechnic will contain a comma no courses in the polytechnic will contain a comma in their name otherwise we are uh, doomed with this uh, kind of uh, representation we convert the, that into an array and the array will contain many strings so it will be an array of strings every co every position will uh, uh, contain one name and uh, uh, convert uh, uh, the names into acronyms so for example a computer architecture uh, will be converted to ca c with the initial letter of computer and a is the initial letter of, of architectures uh, data science database technology will be d s a d t mm. for the moment the end that should be omitted uh, will be included for a moment we don't uh, uh, make it uh, too complex for now and we want to print the resulting acronyms and full names so again it's very very simple algorithm just to familiarize a bit more with uh, uh, um, arrays uh, strings and how to convert arrays to strings uh, and vice versa okay so let's do that uh, in our uh, vs code so we can create a new file i call it courses courses.js and uh, we use strict and we start by um, defining the name of the courses uh, const course list course list cor list is a string uh, with all these names let me just pick the powerpoint for cut and pasting and we can put that that, that into a string uh, it's a very hard to read string hmm, because it's very long so it would be better to break it to, to many lines hmm, to make it more readable uh, we can do that if we use the back tick as a definition of the string so the inverse uh, accent so it's another way of defining the string but uh, uh, 
strings defined with the backtick can span several lines. Mm. So we try to maybe go into a new line here so that it becomes more readable. And then we end the string there. What happens when uh, we create a multi-line string? Let's have a look. Course list. And uh, it will, the string will, uh, of course, contain all the contents span across multiple lines. Uh, the only problem this is that the string will also contain the new lines here and there. Mm -hmm. So this string will contain um, the characters, the spaces, but also the new lines when we broke the lines there. So it's a problem that we have to deal with later. What do we do with this string? We just need to break it up into an array that will contain the names, one per array position. Okay, we already know how to do that. Uh, there is a split method on the strings objects. We, so we can define the courses as an array created by splitting course list dot split the split method splits a strings spring into a into substrings using the specified separator and then returns all these substrings as a single array and the separator identifies the character or characters to use in separating the string so in this case the separator is the comma and Right now we can see how the generated array looks like. It's an array with the different uh, uh, items uh, co corresponding to the different parts of the string. Uh, the only problem that we see, so you already did all the job for us, uh, something that uh, if we had to do that character by character would have uh, quite complex or boring for at least um, the only problem is that there are spaces here and there so computer architecture has a space before and data science has a space and you and the new line before um, just because they were part of the original string so we want to get rid of those spaces no? also the text uh, of the exercises uh, say that ensure that there are no extra spaces be beware that okay so how we can clean up the strings by removing the extra spaces at the beginning of the line, maybe at the end of the line and so on. Well, this is easy because we have the, um, the uh, trim method. Uh, so I, I must apply to go, that to a string. Uh, we have the trim method, if I remember well. So let's start, for example, at trim. Find it. Always have uh, uh, the Mozilla Developer Network um, ready for you. Here, string prototype trim is a way of saying the trim is defined on all objects of type string. Trim is the method to remove white space from both ends of the string, and white spaces are not just spaces, but all the characters, uh, uh, space tab, and so on, and all the line terminators. So this is good because it will remove for us the um, initial spaces and the and final spaces and also the initial or final new lines. In, in this case, we have some that we want to remove. Uh, so the idea would be let's uh, trim all the strings in this, in this array. So for um, Well, let's do the, 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 the stupid for before and then try to improve it. Let i equal to zero. Uh, i uh, must be less than courses, courses dot length. This is the length of the array. So the number of courses is not the length of the string. It's not course list dot length, but it's courses dot length. i plus plus. And the body would be courses dot uh, of position i dot trim so we call the trim method on these strings and nothing happens well 
the loop is, is executed by uh, the strings are not changed so we should always remember because these are strings this is a method that uh, works on strings it will never change the string it will never change the value of the string hmm? every string method always returns a new string new string representing uh, the calling string strip of white space or whatever so all the string values always remember uh, return uh, new strings and will never change the existing ones so what we have to do is to replace the position i of the array with a new string that is the trimmed version of the string that previously was occup occupying the same exact position okay so and in this case we successfully cleaned up uh, all these uh, uh, spaces and leading spaces and leading new lines in the strings uh, okay so first of all all string elements or string functions and methods always create new strings and never modify the string in place why in the array in the array methods some of them modify the array some of them uh, recreate new arrays so we should be more careful hmm? so how can we convert this uh, uh, for loop into the newest version uh, well, we could say for let uh, course, uh, let me write it as a C of uh, courses. And then we can write uh, instead of courses, I simply C dot trim. C will iterate, will take the name of each of the courses. So we can take the string and trim it but we cannot replace it because for replacing it in the same place uh, uh, we need the index i of where this uh, um, string is positioned we cannot we cannot just for example no, one could think okay but c refers to the first second third fourth element in the array we can just replace this element uh, with the, the trim version uh, this is not working because this is changing with it's creating a new string and making c to point to that string and it's not um, changing the original content of the array this is not so intuitive uh, so maybe let's uh, uh, look it look at it in the python tutor just to see what is happening while it's loading uh, c is a copy of a, or is a reference to the string contained in a given position we take the string we replace it uh, we uh, remove the spaces and then what we are doing here is to change the reference of c change the point where the c is uh, pointing to and uh, the initial value into the string uh, is not uh, running so i'm sorry but at this moment the python tutor is not uh, running so uh, i suggest you can try that uh, yourself uh, um, when the internet is more uh, responsive in this case hmm? just to understand what is happening so the issue here is that uh, with the let uh, of uh, with the for of statement uh, we can very easily uh, navigate through all the values into an array to read them to do some computations with them and so on but there's no way right now to change those values because we don't have the index and so we cannot reassign that specific position of the array uh, there is a trick of course there is an uh, from uh, every array hmm, every array there's a method called entries the entries method entries so we need the parentheses returns it's a uh, very synthetic way uh, of explaining a complex thing, thing an iterable of the key value pairs for every entry in the array so if courses is an array courses.entries is an array of couples of pairs and every pair is a pair of the index and the value put together and so we can extract with a destruction assignment that we may, uh, saw before uh, two values for each iteration 
the first value will be the index and the second value will be the string so we have the string the course in this case and we can trim it and the trimmed string the modified one can be put back into the position courses courses i uh, courses -E -S, position i so with this entries method we extract from an array a sort of a two columns array one with the indexes and the other with the values and we can iterate row by row by extracting uh, index value one index two value two index three value three until the end of the, on the string hmm. so this is a way of iterating an array when you need also when you also need uh, the index uh, to do something with the elements or to maybe store or remember where the index of an element was you don't iterate simply over the array but iterate over the two column entries of the array, um, describing the array and this should work at this point yes hmm? as before but we just uh, rewrote the four without using the ugly uh, old time syntax and try to iterate over the array uh, did we do everything no because right now we need to create a second array by computing the acronyms of the courses the initial letter of the name so we create a new array and try to populate this array one location at a time uh, with the acronym so create acronyms for the courses so we create a new array acronyms acronyms uh, and we create this empty and so we can push we can add at the end all the acronyms uh, uh, one at a time uh, creating the acronyms uh, means of course iterating over the courses and for each course uh, for each course let C or const C of uh, uh, courses uh, we can extract the acronym of that specific course uh, and then push it uh, uh, at the end of the acronyms array um, you see that we are redefining C here I defined it there already there uh, it's not a problem because this is a different C when we define something inside the for loop uh, the scope of that variable will just uh, uh, end at the end of the for loop so we are creating a new variable even if it's called in the same way hmm? it's not a problem redefining that um, so how to create the acronyms uh, we have a string like data science and database technology we need to extract d s a d t one possibility is to take this string this name and split it into separate words and take the first character of uh, each uh, word hmm? so for example we have uh, uh, we can uh, split the course name into its component words const words are I can obtain words by, by taking the course name and splitting it uh, at the spaces and at this point I have uh, uh, just have to have a look uh, words let's see what ha what's happening here uh, I took uh, ev take each of them each, each each course and I split this course into a set of words so we see that for example web applications one has been split into the web application one computer architecture has been split in computer and architectures and so on hmm? so this is the the words uh, that I just uh, split from the uh, string composing describing the name of the course from this array I just have to construct to build a string uh, with the initial letters uh, of the array so uh, this is very simple uh, again you need to iterate over this array and take the first element of each string and join all them together into a string uh, so we define a first string uh, uh, acronym acronym singular acronym uh, we let's start with the empty string and then we iterate over the words for 
const word of words uh, simply add to acronym this is a string so it doesn't have the push method we can just add plus equal at the end the initial letter of the word the, the initial character of the word and this acronym uh, we can print it acronym to see what happened what happens and we see that computer network technology and services gntas is written down there so we just have to uh, first of all convert everything to uppercase because the text asks us for uh, ac acronyms acronyms that should be all capital letters and then uh, just uh, add them into the array mm -hmm. so we don't add the w0 the first character but uh, the oh the, there's a two uppercase method which is already there again it doesn't change the string but it returns a, a, a modified string so uh, I, uh, when I take the letter, I convert it to uppercase and then um, add it at the end of the acronym. So, at the end of this iteration, the only thing I need to do is uh, uh, again to uh, acronym, to push at the end of the, of the array the new acronym that I just generated. And so we can remove these two debug statements. And I should be able to also print the acronyms at the end. So let's see if it works. Yes, it does. Web application one, computer architecture, data science and database technology, computer network networks, and so on. Hmm? So we have the array with the with the we have the array with the course names and the matching array with the acronyms. Uh, all of these operations that we do with uh, loops uh, and the variables and so on, uh, we will revise them when we see something about the functional programming. So with map and reduce methods and so on, we could also rewrite most of these uh, in a functional programming style, uh, which is, will be, again, a, a step further from the, this kind of code. So this kind is still in some way low level because we are looping through uh, data structures uh, instead of just using high level higher level transformation methods but this is something for the third week we have one last point here uh, print the resulting list of acronym and full name well we already did it Ac the full list of uh, full names is here the full list of acronyms is there okay we, we can remove the printing of the initial string because it's ugly to see extra in alphabetical order of acronym so maybe we can try to do also this extra uh, how can we sort into alphabetical order an array well it's very easy we have the sort method so we could uh, simply sort the acronyms dot sort and we have them sorted into alphabetical order uh, the sort method will change the array okay uh, source an array and uh, it works because the acronyms will be in alphabetical order but the courses will not will not match anymore so the first course will be web application one and uh, the first acronym will be CA right? they don't match we want to sort them together in a way uh, right now the, the right the way to, of doing that is creating objects uh, and defining a sort order for the objects that we'll learn in the next week. For the moment, we could do just a, um, a, a, a simple version of that. We can create uh, strings uh, that concatenate uh, uh, acronyms and, um, and courses, and then we can print the string, uh, or sort and print uh, these strings. Hmm. So for example, we can just create uh, an, um, Yes, an array containing uh, strings of uh, output. Let's call it output because it's what we want to print. What we want, what we want to print is an empty array, and uh, for every position 
let's iterate over the acronyms for example but we want also the index x because we want to pick the the corresponding course so for uh, i a of acronyms i is the index and a is the string on, uh, matching the acronym we can add the output dot push a string composed of of the um, acronym first so a and then we concatenate maybe a dash and finally we add the, the name of the course which is courses of the position i at the end uh, we sort this uh, array and finally we can print it okay so this should probably work let's see uh, it doesn't of course uh, acronyms uh, for IA. Ah, sorry, it's not acronym, but acronym of entries. Because we want to extract both the index and the value. Okay, and so we have these strings that are built by acronym dash name. All of them are put into this array of strings output that we are sorting and so that everything will be printed in alphabetical order. Uh, I wanted to add this part because, uh, uh, again, I wanted to comment on line 29 where uh, the code is quite ugly. I'm composing a string by concatenating different pieces. There is a much cleaner way of doing that uh, with the template literals that we uh, mentioned last time. Output dot push we can create a, a define a, use the template literal to uh, actually define the rules for composing the string and let uh, the javascript runtime do all the concatenation so actually we want to add the acronym so remember the template literal is a string in backticks we already use backticks at the beginning for creating multi-line strings okay but they also can um, use the as template for interpolating values so in the first case we have an ex um, a so when we want to interpolate a variable value into a, a template string we just use the dollar braces syntax to include the result of an expression so dollar braces a means the value of variable a space dash the value of courses i so we can not just uh, we are not limited just to use uh, uh, simple variables where you can put every, any javascript expression inside the template literal and it tends to be more more literal and less uh, verbose than the old the old style version and of course the results is the same it will compose so when you are trying to compose a string by interpolating different elements uh, probably the best way is to think to remember that template literals are just designed for making that easier for you and i think this uh, will uh, conclude yes the the requirements of this second exercise uh, again if you revise it we, j we did some playing with strings uh, with arrays conversion from arrays to string to st from strings to arrays with the with the split method that's also joined but it's much easier so i didn't uh, include that uh, uh, in the exercise that does the, the reverse uh, and we try to familiarize with some of the methods uh, of the string objects uh, and uh, usually strings by themselves are very poor <laughs> because uh, if they are immutable you cannot do anything with a string uh, that's why strings and array usually go hand in hand together and we started also to understand that we there should sorry there should be better ways uh, of handling uh, complex objects because uh, having courses and acronyms in two separate arrays uh, is not so uh, useful is not so easy for creating something more complex so uh, next time you will see how to create objects and functions and a bit of functional programming in order to uh, also um, to structure our data in a better way so uh, thank you for the moment uh, and we can discuss these exercises also in the in the video chats that we'll have uh, uh, starting tomorrow morning. Thank you.